we're being asked to find the sample standard deviation. The sample standard deviation is denoted with the lowercase letter s, and the mathematical formula is to take the square root of the summation of the differences from the mean, and sorry, that should be the sample mean, x bar, quantity squared, and then divided by n minus 1. So what does all this mean? This means that we are going to find the sample mean first, and that is by adding all of the data values together and then dividing by the sample size. So here we have all of our data values. And so if we were doing this with the mathematical formula, we would simply add all of the numbers together and then divide by how many we have. So we have how many? One, two, three, four, five. So our sample size, the lowercase letter n, is 5. So when you simplify this, you get 39 divided by 5. And 39 divided by 5 is 7.8. Now, you can also use the average function in Excel to find the mean by just typing in average in a parenthesis and then selecting your data and closing the parenthesis and press enter. Another way of doing this is to start to type in average and then you'll see that it starts to be recommended here and I can double click that then select my data and I don't actually have to close my parentheses for this to work but it's something you want to do if you're ever using more than one formula in one calculation. So now that we have the mean what we want to do is subtract that from each and every data value. Now this can be made very simple when using Excel because you can start with an equal sign, click on your data value in that row, and subtract the value 7.8 and press enter. Now that I have that done in one cell with a relative reference on this first cell here, I can use the copy handle in the bottom right corner to copy that formula down and it'll keep subtracting 7.8 from each of the data values in the first column. Another way of doing this, if you are ever nervous about, sometimes the mean is not um, an exact value and you might have to approximate it and that can cause round off error in your final answer. So you can also get this done by clicking on that cell, subtracting and clicking on the cell containing your mean, but then you wanna make it an absolute reference or just the mean. And you can do that by pressing the F4 key on your keyboard to put dollar signs in front of the column reference and in front of the row reference so that when you copy the formula down, it keeps that one reference in place. So always refer to that one value. You can also type the dollar signs in by hand by coming up into the formula editor bar. So now I have all the differences, all the values that differ from the mean, how much they differ from the mean. Because remember, our average, our mean, was 7.8. So the value 10 is 2.2 difference above the mean. And the value 3 is a difference of negative 4.8. It's 4.8 below the mean. So we're getting all of our differences here because we'd like to find out what's the typical amount that values tend to be different from the mean. Now, if we added these together and tried to average them, we'd end up with zero because there's negatives and positives. So when we add them, it ends up being just zero. So we're not going to get anywhere with that. What we need to do is somehow make these positive, and we do that by squaring. So we're going to take each and every difference and raise it to the power of two. And because a negative times a negative is a positive, we get all of our squared differences positive. So now we can average this. So we can take the sum of our squared differences, our squared deviations, and now we have something that we can average dividing it by the sample size. So that's what we're going to do next here. So, so far in my formula, I have the summation of all my squared differences, and I'm going to divide that by 5 so that I can get the average squared deviation. So now, 40.8 is 
divided by 5 is 8.16. So now I'm going to take the square root of that because that's an inflated average deviation, right? Because we raised everything to the power of 2. So what we want to do is the opposite of raising to the power of 2 and take the square root of that. Um, also, I did not subtract 1 from my n like it shows in the formula here. Now, if this had been all of my population values, this would be correct to do. But because it's the sample standard deviation, we uh, found over time that doing n minus 1 gets you closer to the true standard deviation. So we want to actually divide this by 1 less. That's because this one is a sample standard deviation. Right? So actually, the answer is going to be the square root of 10.2. And to take the square root, you can just type in SQRT or just start typing in SQ for square root, and you'll see that it um, offers you the option to use the square root function that returns the square root of a number. So you can double click that and click on your value 10.2 or type it in by hand. And then you get your final answer. So this right here is the sample standard deviation for this problem. All right, and as I mentioned before, if this was a population, so if I changed this question a little bit and said, find, say, find the population standard deviation, then that would mean that I'm assuming that this is the whole population here represented. And so then I would have only divided by five here instead of four, and then I would have had a different answer. Okay, but that's how you answer this question, and I hope that helps.